these are profound things and we're continuing to grow in them. This morning as we get started, we have the privilege of David Cole uh, being in our midst. As you all know, David is our chairman of the Board of Regents and he's serving in that role the second time. Um, and he has been such a tremendous support to us in the development of the university. He brings, yeah, just the integrity of a, a life uh, dedicated to Christ uh, and the perspective of wisdom that he has to us time and again. He's been such a champion and support for us. And, and we've been thinking about multiplication and fruitfulness and what needs to happen for us to grow into all that God wants us to be and do. And God had placed this very word on his heart. And uh, so we want to invite David to come and minister to us as we listen deeply. And then we'll be looking at how we can walk into m greater application of this today. Thank you, David. Can I just pray for you? Mm. Lord, thank you for this dear man. Thank you for uh, the way he stood with us and supported us and encouraged us. How he's brought wisdom and perspective. Thank you for the leadership gift he is to us. We pray that you'd anoint him this morning as he ministers to us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. Uh, it's been wonderful to be here and just say I'm so encouraged by uh, you all and just what's happening in the U of N. It's a great, uh, been a great joy to serve in this role. Uh, and uh, there's just so many exciting things are happening around the world at this time. And uh, many of you know since the Singapore gathering, uh, there's, there's just been a total change and even greater uh, decentralization uh, throughout the globe and opening up for new leaders to uh, come on track. And I've had the joy of uh, living in Singapore and uh, working out into Asia and just working alongside some of our teams and seeing the tremendous... Uh, uh, just leadership out there in our midst and the multiplication that is happening. Uh, there's, there's other parts of the world that may be struggling, but I, I believe the Lord is, is just working and he's going to answer our prayer and just bring everything into a, a great place uh, in the future. Uh, Sue and I have recently just moved to uh, Korea. Uh, we, we've been in Singapore 10 years all up, working out into Asia. And then I was in... Um, Daejeon City in Korea last June and uh, we were just farewelling our, our last of our six children off to do a DTS in Lausanne uh, with Marcus and Anita and crew and uh, I on the second night of ministering in this large church in the city I was just going to bed and the Holy Spirit uh, said to me just before I stepped into bed are you willing to move to Korea and I went oh my I know that voice uh, you know and so I, w I went to sleep and I woke up and the presence of God was so strong and that same question was are you willing to move to Korea and uh, of course you just say yes Lord but what I loved about I, I do, you know sometimes uh, in the mission world we we get the Great Commission and, and it seems very cold and harsh you know, go and you, you do this and do that. But actually, this was an invitation from Jesus. Uh, it was like, uh, uh, will, are you willing to come to Korea? And I don't know all that's uh, going to take place, but uh, it was an invitation uh, by the Lord Jesus into uh, his work in that part of the world. And uh, I, just, I just saw something in the heart of Jesus when he calls us into something. It's so beautiful. It comes out of his heart the meekness and loneliness of his heart. All of you have been called into different areas uh, within the U of N uh, and different responsibilities, but it's invitation from the Lord. And um, so anyway, I said yes, but I thought, how am I going to convince my Australian wife of this? Who's more prophetic than I am. And the Aussie, on the other hand, I thought, boy, it's got to be God. So, uh, but unbeknown to me, two days beforehand, the Lord said to Sue in Singapore, are you willing to change, Sue? And she said, of course, Lord, that's, that's a one, 101, you know, Christianity. It's 101 YWAM. And then the next day she said, Lord, what did you mean by that? And the Lord just gave a one-word reply. 
He said everything. And it just came with such a weight. And she didn't know what that meant. And so when I called, her heart had been prepared. And then we went and spent some time seeking the Lord uh, and so on to confirm that. But I went down to Seoul to call to all there, about 3,000 people there. I th you were there, weren't you, Marcus? And, um, and I was sitting down the back with Sam Duram, one of our Indian leaders. And um, I, c I can remember at the break, I was just writing on my spiritual journey on my phone, uh, Lord, are you wanting us to move to Korea? And then I felt the Lord show me a few things about Northeast Asia uh, that, that were going to be happening. And so, uh, I, and I said, I need to bounce this off someone who knows me personally. I, you know, people have walked the journey with us over the years. Uh, so it's not just, just me. And so I, I knew John Dawson was there, and John's known our family for a long time. And I thought, if I see John, I know he's pretty busy out the back with all the other speakers, but if I see him, I'd love to bounce it off him. And, uh, and then I closed my phone, and blow me down, uh, John standing right next to me. I thought, Lord, this is happening very fast. <laughs> and... From then on, uh, as we've just uh, bounced it off other people to have known us and sought the Lord and shared it with our family, uh, we moved four days before I came here. So we're in Busan City uh, and with a relatively small uh, international YWAM work there, been working on campaigns in Korea and our desires to serve in that region. But that's just of a... Uh, you know, just a bit of a personal story and just the wonderful way the Holy Spirit uh, leads us and is leading this mission. And so uh, just a scripture I'd like to, just this, this scripture has been uh, just, I, I haven't been able to shake it off for, for quite some time and I just want to share with you, uh, I, I like my walk with Jesus, I like it to be very simple. How many like sim simplicity in the midst of a very complex world? And I know many of you are dealing with very complex uh, situations and circumstances, and I honor you and salute you for that uh, and, and just what you have to deal with. And it's, it's amazing. I, I actually think that we've seen through what Vince and many others are doing, we've seen uh, very complex things become very simple. And, and I think that is a real key for all of us to uh, keep our sanity in the future. <laughs> Isn't that right? So uh, let's just have a look at this scripture here. I was just uh, reading this. It said, So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. And um, I just began to dwell on that and, and just see that there was multiplication taking place. And over... The last number of years in YWAM, we've had uh, a lot of talk about multiplication. But actually, I, I get quite concerned uh, personally when we talk about multiplying, but actually we miss some of the key elements that we see in the early church that were uh, so necessary for multiplication that will last. And, and so we just go on to the next uh, slide, this one here. There's two simple keys to multiplication. One is the fear of the Lord, and one is the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And I, I think there, there are many other things we could talk about how to multiply. We could talk about better communication, uh, recruiting, uh, administration, uh, w you know, worship and prayer, Ma many other things we could bring in and have a whole list for multiplication. But if we wanted to boil it down, and say, how do we want the University of the Nations to multiply? How do we want YWAM globally to multiply? I would say these two key factors will keep us on track. The fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Let's go on to the next slide. So the fear of the Lord, I think we're all familiar with this. But actually, as I travel sometimes, I see that actually there isn't the fear of the Lord as it should be on some parts of our operation globally and it concerns me I, I see compromise I see uh, just areas that uh, you know uh, you know I, I just have a few alarm bells but 
uh, it leads me into prayer. I take it usually to prayer, and I'll finish on, on that. But I think in Isaiah 6, we see that Isaiah saw that we're, you know, woe unto us, we're people. I've come from people of unclean lips. And, and at that area of, uh, I, I don't think, no matter how far we go forward, we, we have to come, we do come into that place like Isaiah saying, Lord, we're a people of unclean lips. We, we, we have many faults. We have many uh, areas in our mission uh, that, that need attention. And, uh, you know, uh, in the midst of that, we see, the, uh, we've seen the holiness of God. And I, th I think for, in order to see a greater revelation of the fear of the Lord on everyone in our midst uh, and as we grow, that, that we need a greater revelation of the holiness of God. And uh, I, Danny was just sharing with me the other day, you know, often we hear a lot on, on the love of God, but not much on the wrath of God. And so, uh, you know, we like to major on, on the love of God, but we can't deny that God is a God who does judge, who does step in, and he will not just bring, you know, uh, shut an eye forever and there will be consequences for things so um, uh, you know all of us stand on that plate of coming to God in humility saying God we desperately need you you're a holy and mighty God and we want to walk with you today and I saw that in that prayer of Saint Saint Francis that was it Saint no Saint Patrick yeah uh, and and we just need a greater encounter I think uh, and particularly in our schools, our training, the fear of the Lord resting upon us. And I believe particularly in the training arm for University of the Nations, is you, you're very key. You're very key. You can influence the whole of the mission at large. And, and so that teaching on the fear of the Lord from DTS is right through and that we live that. If, if the University of the Nations is strong in that, not in a legalistic sense, but coming out of a, the beauty of God and the revelation of the holiness of God and, and those short accounts with God daily, I think it will have tremendous benefit right across the whole uh, mission because we're dealing, as you know, with a generation that, that is coming into our midst. I, the majority of schools I've been in recently, they're students from 18 to 25. And uh, many of them have no understanding of the word of God uh, they're very shallow, come from very shallow uh, Christian backgrounds. And so there's a great need for the fear of the Lord. The other thing is the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And I saw when that prayer was being read out of St. Uh, Patrick. Good, <laughs> I'm getting those guys mixed up. Uh, but, you know, they, they, I, I see in his heart a desire for the comfort of the Lord Jesus with him uh, daily. In, in trial so comfort we often think you know something nice and cozy and you know candles and coffee and chocolate and everything else but actually these guys didn't face that all the time they were out in great danger and so they needed the comfort of the Holy Spirit in times of uh, impending martyrdom crisis uh, you know all sorts of things going on both in and outside the church but the comfort of the Holy Spirit I feel often the Holy Spirit is put on the back burner. And uh, I, I, the Holy Spirit's job, as you know, is to lift up Jesus and, um, and to glorify Jesus. But he's a Holy Spirit. And uh, I, I just feel that we need to put the Holy Spirit, give the Holy Spirit uh, the, the role of leading over our reasoning, over our good ideas, over our, everything we're doing. And say, Holy Spirit, what do you think about this? I, is this in line with what you want? Now, often we say we do that. But, you know, I, I've just observed sometimes we just go in our, not here in this circle, but in other areas, I've just, we go by our own good ideas. And I remember John Dawson uh, saying that idolatry is actually where we put our own thoughts and reasoning understanding over the Holy Spirit. You know, we say in the, the Western world, we, well, we, we don't worship, you know, idols like in Thailand and physical things, but actually we do just as much in our own minds. So 
the Holy Spirit is welcoming the Holy Spirit and loving the Holy Spirit and uh, just following what he's saying. And I, you know, uh, I, I just believe that's very, very important. Next slide, please. So the other things in that scripture was that these churches, and you could look even at YWAM bases, they knew uh, peace, they knew edification, they were being built up, and they knew multiplication. That's what we all want. Amen? I think the church would like that uh, globally. So uh, peace, edification, multiplication. And so these guys, I, I, I think they had a great zeal to share the gospel, but there was just the internal life and them following the Lord daily of the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit that really kept them on track and the Lord multiplied. And uh, I, I just know, you know, sometimes people would, uh, you know, come into my house in New Zealand. They'd say, Dave, there's something, I really feel God's presence here. And I'd go, oh, okay, yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you just, when, when you go into a place, you can sense whether there's the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You can sense when there's tension in the air. You can sense when uh, there's an uncleanness. So the Holy Spirit can show us that. And I, I believe the Lord wants us to take heed to times that, yes, there's some tension here in this operation. There's tension here. There's something unclean. There's something not right. And we don't just put it aside. I, I was just uh, in Korea the other day. I was going down some steps and I almost fell forward uh, with one of the steps that was loose and uh, it had rotted away. And I said to the YM leader, I said, we need, we need to get that fixed right now. That's obviously been like that a long time. But someone's going to get seriously <laughs> injured if we don't fix that. So sometimes we can live with things like rotten boards and different things and we don't actually pay attention to it. Uh, you know, rather than, okay, something's really radically wrong here. Something needs fixing and we attend to it. So that's where the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the leadership of the Holy Spirit comes in. So uh, we see this in the book of Acts. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. God, God wants to move powerfully <coughs> through our operations globally uh, with awe. You know, so uh, how, how many can remember back in the early YWAM days when the presence of God was so strong, the fear of the Lord, and God was just doing miracles daily? You know, it was just like amazing. People had come in and you could hardly keep up with the Holy Spirit with what he's doing. It was just amazing. I, I believe those days are not just for the past, they're for the future, they're for now, but particularly for the future. And, and I believe as we have these two keys, fear of the Lord, comfort of the Holy Spirit, that welcome, softness, sensitivity of the Spirit, that, that we will ensure that the, we will see we will see signs and wonders. Yeah. You know, I, I was, someone said to me the other day, Dave, do you realize Catherine Kuhlman didn't have any major altar calls? She didn't try and stir up the crowd to see miracles and signs and wonders. She actually just welcomed the Holy Spirit. She just had worship and, and just adoration of Jesus and waiting on God, and God would sovereignly move in the audience. And she would get people up to testify, but... It wasn't strained, it wasn't pushed, it wasn't anything of man, it was God. And, I, and I, I just feel that the Lord wants to break through in areas that are, uh, you know, we're in all sorts of areas, in healing, uh, deliverance, in breaking strongholds, and moving things forward in the nations, uh, in us, so that our communities right across the world have a mark on them that is just extraordinary. Okay. Uh, we see Paul said, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. I don't know about you, but I, I've just got a hunger to see the power of God like we've never seen before. And, and not men lifted up, not types of ministries, but Jesus lifted up. Amen. And the power of God working in extraordinary ways. And I know we see that in different teams and different places, but... The Lord wants the whole mission to experience that. Okay, and lastly, 
uh, the power of God. The kingdom of God is not a matter of words, but of power. So I, I don't believe you can have the power of God without the fear of the Lord and the openness and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you can have a lot of uh, tough work and people trying to force uh, God's people into doing things, but you won't have God's power. How many of you want God's power? Yeah. You want God's power. You don't want just something that's soulish and of the flesh. And uh, let's go on to the next one. Uh, just as I've been working around Asia and I see different situations, even in YWAM, and, and I say, oh Lord, we're bound there. We've got, there's, there's strongholds there. There's cultural strongholds. There's other strongholds that are affecting us. Help us. And wh one of the prayers I've been saying is, Lord, bring, the f bring your finger into the situation. Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you place your finger on this operation here? Or on this leadership team or anything else? Would you break through? Sometimes uh, people cannot even see the blindness. They can't, they can't see where, where they're affected. So it's going to take something supernatural. It's going to take a breakthrough. And I just say, Lord, would you release the finger of God to move into that situation? Because you can't do it by just reasoning alone. You can't do it by just chatting. You need the power of God. And um, I, I just love this, this scripture here uh, that Jesus said, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man guards his house, his possessions remain undisturbed. But when there's one greater that comes, and that is uh, the Lord Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, he overtakes these things. And so... Uh, as we move into the future, my prayer is that uh, we, we re really just keep the simplicity uh, of the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit as major uh, guidelines for us to, to bring multiplication into the future. Uh, otherwise, I think we could get a little bit off track on areas. But I believe if we do it in with some of these principles here in Acts 9.31, that we will know peace, we will know edification, and we will be uh, just see great uh, multiplication in our ministries, in our colleges, and everywhere we go. Amen? Amen. Let's just pray, shall we? Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence here. We, we just thank you. We're so dependent upon you uh, to, to just uh, take us forward into the future. And, and we just ask, Lord, in, in every college, in every part of the university, in every part of YOM globally today, we ask for the fear of the Lord. We ask for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. We just trust you to bring your finger on situations that are uh, out of order or need alignment, would you come? We just agree as a company of your people. And uh, we don't do it from an attitude of pride and arrogance. We do it, come before you at humility, Lord, and say, would you do that? We want to know the presence of God. We want to know that peace in our midst as we move forward. So we're asking you just to come afresh today in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.